All right, what's up, my peoples? And uh, this is structure free learning again. And check this out. We're going to go back to our conjugate beam methods. And if you can agree that in the conjugate beam method uh, for structural analysis and beam deflections, that the, uh, the slope in the real beam is, is equal to the shear in the conjugate beam, and that the deflection in the real beam is equal to the moment in the conjugate beam, then really all that's left is statics and the hard part. And the hard part is drawing the conjugate beam. And in order to draw the conjugate beam, you just, you know, really the thing to do is look at the tables in your textbook and, and utilize those because all it is is about converting the boundary conditions to the proper boundary conditions or supports in the conjugate beam. So taking the boundary conditions in the real beam and, and converting it to the conjugate. And, and the way that, you know, the, all of that is based on this relationship right here between the conjugate beam and the real beam, or the real beam here, the real deflections and slope versus the conjugate shear and moment. And so if you, and, and here you'll see this in a lot of tables, right, in textbooks. But here, at a pin, our vertical deflection is zero, and our slope is can be anything, right? It can be a number that changes. So what that means is because this displacement d relates directly to moment, in the pin, in the conjugate beam, we have to have a moment equal to zero and, and then have a shear here. We have to have a shear. And what that is is a pin support in the conjugate beam. So a pin in the real beam at the edge, at the edge of a beam, an edge pin, if you will, is an edge pin in the conjugate beam. So that was pretty simple. Let me make these. Oh, it's okay. If I, let me do this in purple. So delta equals zero theta just to be consistent with this here m zero v right here okay and then the roller if you look here again the deflection is zero I have a slope here and so you could just say that the moment here is also zero and the shear is just a value right because again you have you can have any sort of rotation at the roller and so in this case also a roller in the real beam is a roller in the conjugate beam the reason it's not a pin is because you don't want a statically indeterminate conjugate beam right anyway so there's, there's that right there. And then in a fixed here, you have delta is equal to zero and theta equals zero in a real fixed support. And so in, the, in, the, in a conjugate world, you have to have values for, for moment. These have to be zero, and the shear has to be zero, which is a free end. Yay, okay, in the conjugate world. So maybe I should put primes here to indicate conjugate, right? Bam, okay, and the same thing here. Opposite goes true. You can have any displacement, any rotation at a free end. So that means you can have any moment or any shear in the conjugate beam. Yay. So that's a free in the conjugate world becomes fixed in the other. I have an internal pin here, which means that the deflection here is zero. But I could have a rotation. You know, the rotation can be anything here in this case. And so that is really I have to have zero moment and a shear value. Okay. Zero moment and a shear value. Hey. That's a hinge, right? And the same thing here. I have delta equals zero, and theta could be any number. Oops. I can rotate still for internal roller. So theta could be any number. And so here, again, I, have, I need the moment to be zero to correspond with my zero deflection, and my shear could be any number, just like a hinge. And so, again, this internal pin and internal roller both translate into a hinge in the conjugate beam. And then here, a hinge in the, in the real world where you can have both deflection and rotation. Oh, deflection and rotation. I said it in the opposite way I wrote it. Oh no. Okay. But who cares? Right? Doesn't matter. Here I can have here I can have a moment and this might look a little confusing, right? Because some of you might be used to drawing a zero moment at the internal roller, which is not true. Only if the roller is at the end, okay, at the end of the beam, beginning or end of the beam, but not intermediate. So here I can have a moment bam and a uh, and a shear here okay and the moment would just go across I can have a shear because this thing can just rotate so that'll be from the reaction all right hopefully that helps and let's 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 do a couple examples just to see what that looks like for us in terms of taking a real beam into a conjugate beam so I got a couple examples set up here so I've got this real beam here and I want to take this into my conjugate beam so these will be my conjugates conjugate or my bizarro beams conjugate beam right here and so here I've got a pin in in the real beam which which is really just a pin in the in the uh, 
in the real in the conjugate beam. Sorry. Okay. So a pin in the real beam goes to my pin in the conjugate beam. I have an intermediate roller at L1, so that in the conjugate world is a hinge. And then here I have a free end here, which in the conjugate beam is a fixed end. And this is what my conjugate beam would look like. None of my lengths change. This is still L1, and this is still L2 right here. Yeah, there's my conjugate beam. And then you would take the curvature diagram and apply that as a loading on the conjugate beam. And then look, this is still, is this still statically determinant? Oh, this one is not, but we can probably analyze it like statically determinant as long as there's no lateral loads. Uh, let's see, let's make sure we did everything right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Internal pin, internal, yep, 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 to a hinge. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, internal roller to a hinge. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? Okay, and then here I have a fixed I have a fixed beam in the real world. I have a fixed uh, support at the at the beginning of the member, I guess, and then a hinge at L1, and then a, a, a roller at L2. And so in my in my conjugate beam here, I've got bam, and that hinge becomes an internal roller. Boom, roller, and here the roller becomes a roller. Bam, and this looks unstable, right, if I have a horizontal load, but anyway, it'll work in terms of the conjugate beam, but, but here, it, it'll, it'll work as long as the loading is vertical, but this is, is technically an unstable structure, but again here, this is how it gets interpreted in the conjugate beam, and you, all you've got to do is use statics with the curvature as a loading to solve for the deflections. All right, so hopefully that was helpful, and you've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll do some more example problems, I guess. Yeah, why not? See ya.